Okay, so now what uh, we are going to do is we are going to publish this report uh, that we have created to Power BI service. So uh, you just need to go to the publish option right at the top here and it gives you the message that publish this report online in the Power BI service. Uh, if you have, have not signed into the Power BI service, it will ask you to sign in. If you do not have an account already created for Power BI service, it will ask you to create an account. OK. Now I'm already signed in and which I can just verify by looking right here that my uh, login ID is getting displayed right here. So I'm already signed in. So next what I'm going to do is simply click on this publish. Do you want to save the changes? Let's say no for now. Okay, so it seems we'll have to save. So let's save the changes. Okay, and now after saving the changes, it will uh, give you a destination uh, on the Power BI service where you want to publish your report. Now it will actually give you a list of workspaces. If you have multiple workspaces, workspaces are simply uh, yours. Uh, some things that you create or placeholders or directory structures that you create on your Power BI service. Now I have only workspace, which is known as my workspace, which is provided by default. So I'm going to publish it right over there. So let's just select the my workspace. It will give you all these messages that it is publishing it. And once it has finished publishing publishing it to the Power BI service, you'll get a success message. And now there are different options over here. Okay, so there you get two options. You can open it in the Power BI service, or you can also run quick insights on the report that you have just created. So we'll go with the first option for now. We'll see uh, how we can get the insight inside the Power BI service itself. So I'm just going to open it in my Power BI service. Once I click on opening it, it is going to open my Power BI service, which is just going to be a browser based link. And what I'm going to get over here now is the same report that I had created in my Power BI desktop. So I've got it over here in my Power BI service. Now, if I go to my workspaces, I will see that I have got a report which is known as sales and marketing sample PBIX, which is the same name as my PBIX name. And I have the same report under the reports tab over here in my workspace. And I can browse through the different tabs as I could in the Power BI desktop. So I have all those different things created. Now there is also an option right here to edit the report as we could do it in the Power BI desktop. So if you just click on the edit the report here, you'll get the same set of options that you could see in the Power BI desktop. Your visualizations, you want to add something, you have your field list as well where you can just go ahead, create a new page and create a new vis visualization right away. So this is what a full chart. You can start adding your fields to it and you can create a new visualization as well. All right. So you have that option right here as well. And once you have created your visualization, you can just save your report if you want to save your changes to the whatever changes you have done to this report. So this option of editing the reports is available in the Power BI service as well. OK, I was not able to create the free Power BI service. It does not accept any other email except for work email. OK. So do you have any other like any other extension which is not a Gmail or something your maybe your work account? It, it doesn't uh, send any kind of notification so you can use your work email. Shouldn't be a problem. I think it is safe to use the work email or any if you have any university account. I mean, it, it has to be anything other than the generic ones, Gmail, Hotmail, and Yahoo, I guess. So you have you will have to use something like that. Because once you use it, it is going to be a free. Uh, 
account it's not you do not need to pay this is going to be a free and it's not a trial version so it's free for life kind of thing you just need to have that email set up somewhere it should work your work email should work um, you also need to give your phone number though because it will send a code to verify so you need to provide that and it should work try to do that again and see if you're getting some particular error message because it, it, it is uh, straightforward you should be able to do it mostly Try it again and let's see what is the error you are getting, but it should work. It is pretty straightforward. Okay. All right, so once you are in your Power BI service account, you have published a report, you can even edit the reports if needed. The next step that we need to take is to build a dashboard because that is what we are going to be ultimately sharing with the users, uh, which is going to be your dashboard. And that is the primary purpose of having this Power BI service, build dashboards and share it with the different users. So now what we are going to do is we can actually go to the different charts over here. So again, we are in the YTD category charts. Let's, let's minimize these. Okay. And what you can now do is hover over any of the charts. And there is an option. This is something like a pin right over here. And it's called pin visual. And what it is going to do is as soon as you click on it, it is going to pin this particular chart to a dashboard. So the important and interesting thing about the dashboard is that you can pin these different charts to a dashboard which can come from different sources, which means you can have multiple reports for or based on different data sets and data sources and you can pin different charts. You can select one particular visualization of that report and pin it to your dashboard. So your dashboard can have visualizations coming from multiple places. So if you already have an existing dashboard created, it will give you the option of this existing dashboard and it will show you the existing dashboard names where you can make a selection. If you do not have any dashboard built, it will ask you to build a new dashboard. It will just ask you to provide a dashboard name. So for now, let's provide it something called sales and marketing. Okay, and just say pin. And now it will give you a message that this has been pinned to a dashboard. You also have an option to create a phone view or you can just go to the dashboard and view what has happened. If you do not get that option right here, it disappears and like it did for me. You can just go to your workspace where you have created the dashboard and go under dashboards. You can see that a dashboard called sales and marketing has been created. Now, if I click on this dashboard, Okay, I do not want to save those changes that I made to the report. Uh, if you click on this dashboard right over here, you will see that that particular graph or visualization that we pinned has been now put on this dashboard. And there's only one visualization on this dashboard because we pinned only one of those visualizations right here. Now I have an option to move it so I can place it uh, wherever I want to place it and I'm back on this particular, you can see, report because the functionality in this case is that as soon as you click on this visualization, it will take you the source report. So it is good taking me to the source report from which this visualization came. So as soon as I click on it, I'll go back to my source report. Now what I can do is because I'm already back on my source report, I can go to some other page and choose to pin some other visualization. So I'm going to pin this visualization. Now I already have an existing dashboard. So I'm going to pin it to the same dashboard and I have only one existing. So it's just showing me one name. I'm going to pin it right there over here and go back to the dashboard. And now I have got these two different visualizations pinned to the dashboard. Okay, I can again move around. I can put it at the bottom. I can put it right over here. Wherever you want to place it, you can choose accordingly. I want to place it over here. So I want my visualization to look like this. 
So this is how you can keep on adding these different visualizations to the dashboard. If you click on any of these visualizations, it is going to take you back to the report uh, from which this visualization came from. Okay. Now, before going any further in um, what are the features that are available for these dashboards, uh, let's take a look at the My Workspace. So just clicking on My Workspace. So My Workspace or any kind of workspace that you create over here is going to have some kind of a structure. So structure is going to be your dashboards. OK, then you're going to have your reports. So dashboards, uh, you can see the name of the dashboard that we just created. Then you're going to have something called reports. Report is simply the PBIX file that we uploaded. That is your source that is going to be a report. Then you have one option which is called workbooks where you can simply go and you can have your Excel workbooks imported here and then you're going to have your data set. So data set is something that resides on the Power BI desktop side and it is going to be taking the same name. So it is basically the data source that we created in the Power BI desktop. You are going to see a link to that. And now with these all these links, you're going to have different actions which are configured for these links. So you can create a report on this data set. You have an option to refresh this data set right away. You have an option to schedule the refresh. You have an option to see the view related things, which we'll see for the rest of that. You have more options like this. All right. Uh, now let's go back to the reports and see what are the options. You have different options again. You can share this report. You can analyze in Excel. You can run quick insights. You can view related settings and so on. Uh, going to the dashboard, you have similar options where in you can share it. You can view related. So let's click on view related now. Once you click on view related, you will be able to see everything that is related to this particular dashboard. So for example, if you had multiple visualizations coming from different reports, you would be able to see all those report names right here because we just have one right now. That's why we're just seeing this one report. OK, so it is showing you what are the related contents uh, related to this particular dashboard. You have a report by this name and you have a data set by this name. And you will have these different settings. If you click on the settings, you can change the name of the dashboard. If you want, you can put it on the featured list, which you will need to have permission for. Uh, you have some Q&A thing that is turned on, which we'll see uh, in more details. OK, so this is basically showing the hierarchy and how the data is stored in your Power BI service. OK, now let's go back to the dashboard that we just created. Okay, and see what are the options that we have got over here for the uh, things that we have the charts or visualizations that we have added. Now, whatever you add on your dashboard, it is called a tile. So this visualization is one tile. This visualization is one tile. As you can see at the at the top right over here, you have an option also known as add a tile. So if you click on this option, what is going to happen is it is going to give you some options uh, where you can add a tile of the type of a web content, which could be uh, pointing to some URL. You can add some image. You can add some text box. You can add some video right over here. OK, and whatever you add, all these options, they would be added as a tile. So this, these are different tiles, individual tiles. There would be one more tile that would be added. So everything that we add to this dashboard is known as a tile. Now, if we look at these options which are available over here, okay, you can see that you have all these options. Some of them are same as you had in Power BI Desktop. For example, you can open it in focus mode. If you open it in focus mode, then you will be able to see this one particular visualization in more detail. So we can exit the focus mode right now. If you go to more options right here, you can export this to a CSV. You can add the details like the report name and some things like that. And then you have this option which is known as view insights. So this option was also present when we tried to publish the report to the Power BI service, we could have run the quick insights on the whole report. So for now, I'm just going to run the insights on this one particular visualization and let's see what happens. So I'm going to click on this view insights. And now it is running some algorithms at the back end and it is displaying us this message that it is searching for insights related to total units YTD. All right. And now it has search a lot of insights as you can see on the right hand side. So what it is able to tell us is total units YTD and the count of city. OK, so there is a correlation between the total units and the city. 
and it has displayed it in terms of some graphs then it has uh, created some scatter chart for the total units uh, year to date and the total units all over okay and it has mentioned it specifically gives some conclusions as well that it, you have outliers for month index 36 and 48 so lots and lots of analysis information you can see total units ytd shows seasonality so it was even uh, able to find the seasonality it looks like these are the seasons where you have more units being sold then it has created another scatter chart and it has given you a trend line for total units ytd and sales another scatter chart sales by manufacturers so it is rightly able to point out that this particular manufacturer when our still has more sales happening you have your sum of scores okay so whatever uh, different uh, measures were available underlying this particular visualization in the report it has been able to successfully do a lot of analysis on these and it is has been it, it has been able to build all these reports on its own now if you want if you like one of these particular reports you also have an option to pin it back to your dashboard so you can just pin this visual to an existing dashboard or you can pin it to a new dashboard and it will get pinned to your dashboard as well